All right, I think we need to do a little phase refresher for a lot of you guys if you're working in Atmos or if you're thinking about working in Atmos. So one of the things that a lot of us have been figuring out with Atmos in trying to get things to translate from what we hear in our room and on our headphones listening to the Dolby Binaural, when we put it into Apple Music and we start listening to things through their spatial audio algorithm, things change sometimes. And in particular, the thing that drives me the craziest is the vocal a lot of times just doesn't sit the way it does in speakers and in the Dolby Binaural. So in order to get that translation a little better, one of the things that I discovered and then when I was talking to engineers in Nashville earlier this year, one of the things that helps sometimes is to kind of bring the vocal a little bit forward, just a little bit off of the, what we call front wall. That seems to help a bunch with things translating currently right now in kind of late summer of 2023. I'm hoping this is gonna change, but one of the things we have to be aware with that is we are rolling the dice with phase when it comes to speakers. The other day I was checking out a new Atmos mix from, I guess you would say an A-level artist. And when I pulled it up in my studio on my speakers, it was a mess. The vocal was just destroyed, especially when A being back and forth between the stereo mix of the song that was released and the Atmos mix. The vocal, they it was like two different people singing the same song. And I knew right away what the issue was. And it was phase because that vocal had been pulled off of that front wall too much. It was playing back in a lot of my speakers and there were little bits of phase issues. So I want to re review for you guys, what does phase do to a sound? Because for a lot of us who've been working in studios, worrying about phase from a playback system isn't something we've ever needed to do. The only reason I ever started thinking about it was because of all the years I spent doing live sound where we have these massive PA hangs and they are, you know, 100 feet apart a lot of the time. Now, time differences in arrival from those different speakers that's a big factor in what is happening with the sound in the listening area where the audience is. That's something that we need to start thinking about if we're going to mix an Atmos, because whether you believe it or not, people are listening to these mixes on speakers. And if you're following along with technology and what's starting to happen, the ability for people to listen on speakers is getting easier. I've talked about this and I've been talking about this for a year, but there is new technology coming, you know, like in this article, for example, it's gonna get easier. More and more people are gonna listen on speakers and especially when Atmos really starts getting into car audio, it's in there already, but when it really starts picking up, this is gonna be a huge issue because who's gonna be sitting in the sweet spot? Maybe the driver? probably not the passenger, maybe nobody. Nobody is gonna be in the exact sweet spot, which means everybody's going to be hearing things with slightly different time arrivals. So if you have a sound that is the same sound coming out of multiple speakers, this would be a sound that we call this correlated. When we have correlated sound or correlated audio in multiple speakers, we have a large potential for phase to happen. So. I wanna do a real quick demonstration. This is what phase can do to the sound of a voice. So I just have a little snippet of me. Here's what that sounds like. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. So single source, uh, if you're listening to this in stereo, which you probably obviously are if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, this, single voice, it's coming out of the left and right. So 
It's that Phantom Center thing. We're used to this. We've been dealing with this for years. It's not that big of a deal when we only have a sound coming out of two different places. The Phantom Center, though, it works in front when we're working in Atmos. It does not work the same when we start putting sounds between speakers or coming out of multiple speakers when we go onto the sides and we start going around and putting stuff in the air. It doesn't work the same. So what I've done here is I've taken that sample of my voice and I have duplicated it four times. And each of these four extra voices, four extra copies of my voice, they represent what would be a different speaker for me. So let's say I've got five speakers and my voice is going to come out of all five of those. Well, there's no way I'm ever going to sit exactly in a spot where I am hearing all of my voices arriving at exactly the same time. It's always going to be off. And we're talking maybe fractions of an inch, which are, you know, just a couple of samples in the end. So what I did was I took all of these different versions and I shifted them just slightly. In fact, here, if we zoom in, I don't even know if, there we go. Just slightly, I moved them a couple of samples here and there, left and right, just so you can see. So first up, let's just add a single extra voice here. So we've got two out of the center. This one will be off to the left. Here's what happens with that. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. All right, so the centered version is out of time a little bit with the one off to the left, very little. What we're really hearing now is we're hearing it coming more from the left because now we've got more signal coming out of the left. We're not really hearing too much of a phase problem. It's only coming from two places. And two places, not a big deal, because again, remember, Phantom Center works for us, and it's worked for years. We're still keeping everything in front, which helps our hearing. It's not a big deal. Now let's add another version in the right speaker, and let's listen to what happens. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. So again, not horrible. All three of these versions now, they're all slightly out of time. And if I just mute those two new ones again to go back to the original, here's the original. This is a test to show how phase, and then I'm gonna add the two again. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the So we're not messing with the tonality too much just yet we're just getting an increase in level from the extra voices. Now let's add another one. So this will be a fourth version. It'll be off on the side. Let's hear what this sounds like. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. It's not sounding as much like the original anymore. Let's go back to the original. This is a test to show how phase and then add those back in. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the... Starting to get a little muddy. So let's add the final one in there and go back and forth between these. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. Turn those off. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. So it's starting to change. Now I am going to level match the original version to the version where we have five different sources of these. So you can actually really hear what happens tonally when we start blending all of these different sources with slightly different time arrivals into our sound so that you can kind of start to understand what is gonna happen if you're mixing in Atmos and you bring something off the wall and now it is in a lot of speakers in somebody's you know, living room, car, home theater, listening room, wherever it is they're listening, this is one of the things that can happen. And you're probably not going to hear it this way if you're listening 
on headphones to the binaural. The binaural will fix a lot of this because you're only going to be coming out of basically one source and that's going to be one speaker or the other one that's right in your headphones. So this is a really this this is a potentially big deal. So let's listen to it. Here is the original just one one source. This is a test to show how phase here's with all five. This is a test to show how phase can go back and forth. I'll, I'll flip between the two. Here's starting with the original. This is a test to show how phase can really mess up the sound of a voice. So when I listen to that in here, in my speakers, first of all, it sounds like it's coming from one side. That's the Haas effect, basically, at play. But tonally, it's a very different voice compared to the original. So if you want to bring something off the wall, be careful. I'm not saying don't do it. A lot of us have discovered, yeah, it can work. There's, there's things you can do, but this is a big potential issue, something you need to be aware of. It's a big reason why you need to check your mixes on speakers. Just be careful when you're doing it. Check it on multiple playback systems if you can, and make sure that things sound the way you want them to sound. So, anyways, have fun. Hope that helps. I'll talk to you soon.